how long does it take you to get set up for Advent of Code every day? For me, it takes about half a second. Check this out. We don't know anything, right? It's just, we're doing something, yada, yada. Oh, I want to do some Advent of Code. Boom. I <laughs> use Power Toys Run. Look at that. My workspace is launching and it's all there, all where it needs to be. Look at this. Inside of Terminal, I'm already where I want to be. Advent of Code. Boom. I'm ready to go. File Explorer, I have it minimized. I just click it. I'm where I need to be. I can now right click here and I can use new plus and I can add my new day. Boom. As soon as I've added my new day, look at this. I've got the scaffolding for it, but now I'm in VS Code already. So I already have it here. And it's just so powerful. And like now Edge is here. I just go into the problem that I want and I'm, I'm off to the races. So it's so quick. I can literally just do it again. Let me close out everything. All right, everything's closed. Let's say I'm writing an email. I've just finished writing an email. My work day is done and I want to spend 15 minutes getting started on Advent of Code. I just quickly launch Power Toys Run. Boom. And look at that. It's so incredibly quick and fun. Uh, I'm really, really, really excited about coding for Advent of Code this year with these new Power Toys workflows. Hey everyone, my name is Jordi Adumi and today I'm going to be talking about Power Toys and Advent of Code. Let's get into it. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to be setting up my Advent of Code workflow and how you can do it too on Windows to just have so much fun this holiday season with Advent of Code. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Advent of Code, it's basically the same as any other Advent calendar that has chocolates and sweets and gifts, except your gift is 25 days. That is really funny the way I drew that. 25 days of awesome coding challenges. Um, you just go to adventofcode.com and you can even check out the previous years. I'm recording this on December 2nd, which is a Monday. And here you can see there's a timer for day three because it's not available. It's Monday. I'm actually going to get started today. And here we are. And so each day you get these awesome puzzles. For those of you who don't know, I'll just do a very quick recap. You're going to be collecting stars by solving puzzles. There are exactly two puzzles each day with the same input and each puzzle grants you one star. And so if you do all 25 days, 25 times two, you get 50 stars and it's really fun. They have these really incredible stories about these holiday creatures and you work your way all, all the way up through December 25th and you get to solve these awesome problems and it's a lot of fun. Basically the way that it's set up is that each puzzle asks some sort of question. So in this one, it looks like you're basically trying to find the difference between these two values. So here we're trying to find the difference between these two values and then we'll sum those. But this video is not about, you know, writing an algorithm and showing you how I solve advent of code. My coding isn't nearly that good or fun for that. What it is about is how to optimize your workflow for it. And I think I know a thing or two about that. So here's how it always works. You get this puzzle input. And so in years past, what I was doing is I was control copy, control paste into a file, and then I have it in my coding environment and I can, you know, do all the algorithmic stuff that I have to do on that file. But what I found last year is the ability to use this awesome Python library that's going to make us all more powerful. But what's even better than all of that is we're going to be using Power Toys in a really, really awesome way. And with Power Toys, we're actually going to go in and basically just optimize this workflow where I click one button, everything shows up where it needs to be. And I'll probably have a video snippet of that at the beginning of this video uh, where we can all work together. Now, full disclosure, I recorded this entire video. It was the best video you would have ever seen, but I did it without audio because I'm traveling for the holidays and I don't, I mean, I don't even think the audio is going to sound that great. So apologies on that front. Um, I'm just using my built-in framework microphone. I don't know how good that is. But anyways, I didn't have audio. So some of the stuff that I wanted to show you from scratch is already built, but that might actually make this even better. So anyways, let's jump right in and let me show you how to get this all started. So what I'm going to do is in terminal, I'm going to show you my setup really quickly. And so if I go to the uh, root directory here, you can see I'm in my root directory in WSL on Windows. I'll do a really quick video snippet right now, a flash of me installing WSL. I did do that in the previous video. All right, so just to make sure I have all the content here, I did install WSL. All you have to do is WSL dash dash install. It'll automatically install all the dependencies that you need. And then after that, you'll just go ahead and put in your username and password for whatever distribution you're using. I'm using the default distribution of Ubuntu. It's really easy, it's really quick. Now. What I want to show you is my advent of code folder here. What I have, uh, you can tell by all the things in here, I have a bin folder, include lib. All that is, is a virtual environment that I've created. I highly recommend that when you're doing stuff in Python, you create a virtual environment. This flow actually works really well, even if you don't use Python. So don't let that stop you. 
I'm going to walk through the Python library because I think it's cool, but I'm sure there's equivalents for other languages like Rust and C Sharp, et cetera. So anyways, here I've got my advent of code library, excuse me, my directory, and this is the library. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you sort of what I've got set up in here. And you here you can see in advent of code, I kind of showed this in the, the previous video, I've got day one. And day one, part one, all I want to do is basically get the data a lot quicker than copy and pasting or using curl or something like that. And so here, what I'm going to show you is inside here, let's go to day one. And in here, let's go ahead and run this file. Boom. Oh, no, I didn't like that. Uh, no module named AOCD, but I just ran this. Oh, you know what? Okay, this is a good lesson for all of us. You actually have to activate um, your virtual environments. So what virtual environments are is they're sandboxes, but they can also be a little tricky. If they're not activated, you're not gonna be able to find the things inside of it. Uh, now it says I can't run it for some reason. Uh, that's because I'm not in the right folder. Gosh, perfect. I swear it was perfect the first time I did it. It never is, things always happen. But now here you can see I've got the data, right? And that's really awesome. It comes in as a string. I do want to show really quickly that you can actually have it come in as a bunch of different classes and types. And so here you'll see there's this puzzle type. You can actually submit directly with the library, which is really incredible. Uh, I'm just going to be showing you how to get set up and getting that data. But just to be sure that we're doing this right, I can go day two now. I can save. Let me go to terminal and let me actually run part one. Uh, and here you can see the data is a lot different. So if you recall what the data format looked like before, this is different data input for day two. And here you can see every day, all I have to do now is just put in the day. It was that simple and you just get started. And if you wanna get this set up on your machine, because I'm losing a lot of the content from the last video, just go ahead and copy and paste this, create a virtual environment or don't, however you like to use Python, this is pretty easy how you get set up. A big thing that I do wanna shout out though, is that you do need to export your session. So go ahead and look at the content here. I'll put it in the comments. You do want to make sure that you go and get your session ID, which is stored as a cookie. So that's in here, right there, right? Right there. You're going to go ahead, just follow this uh, uh, link. I'll provide it in the comments. And what I did, what I normally do is I save it here. So I'm running in WSL. I save it there as the token. There's a bunch of different things you can do. Just follow the instructions there for getting your token. And that way, because the inputs are different for everybody, it's based on your token and that's stored as like a cookie. This allows the library to basically go and get your data. So this is really cool. This is great. However, this just kind of gets the data quickly. Like I want to get to a point where I just click a button and all my windows go where they're supposed to go in the context that I want them. And I can quickly generate the files that I need in the scaffolding to just start coding. Because Advent of Code is all about doing the, the algorithms and that's the fun part. And so this is where I get to show off two really awesome new power toys. And so a new power toy is called New Plus. That's kind of fun. And what it does is it creates files and folders from a personalized set of templates. Okay, what does that mean? So let me go to the location of where these templates are stored. Basically, you can create any file or folder in here and then that thing can be used in the future from other directories. And so here what you'll see is I actually created this day X folder, right? So what's inside of day X? Well, inside of day X, there's just two files, part one and part two. I think you might be able to see where I'm going with this. Let's just open one in code so we can see. And here you can see what I have is just right now, super simple scaffolding. This will probably evolve as I get back into the flow of uh, actually solving these problems. But here you can see both parts just have the scaffolding so I can quickly get the data and I don't have to worry about copy and pasting. If you use any other sort of functions or methods or files or helpers or whatever, you can go ahead and bake it into your scaffolding. So this is really cool. So why, why is this so cool? Well, let's say we go to our Linux folder where I'm actually going to be running my code and writing my, my code. Let me go to my advent of code. Here you can see I've already done this once, but if I right click, look at that. In the context menu, oops, I accidentally made it go away. In the context menu here, right, there's all of those different scaffoldings. So like all I have to do is click on day X. So let me actually remove this. I don't need this. Are you sure you want to permanently delete this folder? Yeah, whatever. How, how big a deal can that be? Let's refresh. If I right click and I go to new plus and I go ahead and just select that thing. So in this case, oh, it went away. Let me go ahead and select that thing, day X. Now let me refresh. Here you can see I have day X already inside of the folder that I need. I can double click on it and I have this sort of scaffolding. So that's a big part of what we're doing, but it's not the biggest thing. Where this gets really interesting in the video sizzle, if you were interested in that, 
the, this is all going to be powered by this thing called workspaces. So let me go ahead and I'll show you how workspaces works. Um, windowing and layouts inside of the new power toys and this new utility called workspaces. And in here, what we can do is we can launch the editor. And you'll see here, I already created this advent of code one 13 minutes ago in my previous run. Um, but I'll go ahead and basically show how this all works more or less here. So I'm going to set up basically my environment the way that I would want to if I were actually coding and solving this problem. And so for me, probably on a bigger screen, that's okay. I would have on the left-hand side, this window that has the problem where I can read through the problem and understand what the question is. And on the right-hand side, I would have my coding, right? I would have VS code and I'd be able to, to write it out. And then over time, maybe it'll take over the screen. But when I first get started, I want to be able to read the question. I want to be able to, to write some code, maybe print out the data, manipulate the data, that sort of thing. The other th stuff that I would want is like, I usually have terminal. You can notice here, I use terminal a lot and I have terminal open up to the right folder because I need to do my work there. Um, what I need to be able to do is basically open up File Explorer into the right context so I can quickly use new plus. So let's see how this all works. I'm gonna create a new workspace and I'll click capture. And now what you're seeing is really cool. So I have two screens right now on one screen, I'm using OBS so I can record this video for you all. And then on the other screen, I've got all the content that you're actually all seeing. And so if I hover over terminal, you'll see actually like, let me open up terminal. This is where it is on the screen, right? That's where it was when I captured it. So if I minimize this and I hover over it, it's going to show you terminal. If I hover over VS Code, it's going to show you VS Code. It was on the right-hand side. Microsoft Edge was on the left-hand side. Power Toys was open because I'm using it, but I don't want that so I can remove it. And File Explorer was, was open, I think it was minimized. So here, actually, yes, it was. Look at that. Minimized apps. Um, and this is great. Now, the power of this, where this gets really cool, I actually wouldn't also want OBS because that's on the other screen and I don't need to launch that you can put in these CLI arguments. And so if you know some CLI arguments, you can actually get a lot of context in here. So with a button, everything opens up in the right context. So I'm not gonna redo this from scratch because I actually have one that seems to be working pretty well. So I'm gonna just go ahead and edit it so I can show you what I've done. So for Visual Studio, what are my command line arguments? Well, I'm using a remote Visual Studio instance where I'm basically remoting into WSL. I'm using Ubuntu. So here, that's what you're seeing here is the Ubuntu. And then this is basically the root folder that I want to be in. That's good enough. If I open to that folder, that's my virtual environment. I'll see the bin and all that stuff in VS Code, but I'll also be able to see any of the days from the, the previous days and that sort of thing. And I want that to be like, you'll notice here, uh, it's highlighted. It's going to be on the right hand side of the screen. Microsoft Edge, I want it to just open to, you know, advent of code. So that's simple. I just want it to open to my current, you know, year what I'm doing, which is 2024 this year. Uh, and I want it to basically open there. File Explorer, I also want it to open up to WSL because I showed you just new plus. I want to be able to click a button, go to new plus, create a new day and just get started. So that's important for me. And then finally, terminal as well. We're going to be opening, making sure that we're using our WSL instance, which defaults to Ubuntu for me. And then I'm actually just going directly into that same folder. And so with all that said, let's go ahead and show this in action, which is super cool. So I'm going to close all of these things, right? There's no context now when I'm finished closing all this. Okay, great. Like, let's close this too. We don't know anything, right? It's just, we're doing something, yada, yada. Oh, I want to do some advent of code. Boom. I <laughs> use Power Toys Run. Look at that. My workspace is launching and it's all there, all where it needs to be. Look at this. Inside of Terminal, I'm already where I want to be. Advent of code. Boom. I'm ready to go. File Explorer, I have it minimized. I just click it. I'm where I need to be. I can now right click here and I can use new plus and I can add my new day. Boom. As soon as I've added my new day, look at this. I've got the scaffolding for it, but now I'm in VS Code already. So I already have it here. And it's just so powerful. And like now Edge is here. I just go into the problem that I want and I'm, I'm off to the races. So it's so quick. I can literally just do it again. Let me close out everything. All right, everything's closed. Let's say I'm writing an email. I've just finished writing an email. My work day is done and I want to spend 15 minutes getting started on advent of code. I just quickly launch Power Toys Run. Boom. And look at that. It's so incredibly quick and fun. Uh, I'm really, really, really excited about coding for advent of code this year with these new Power Toys workflows. If this was interesting to you, please like, please subscribe, please share with your friends, leave comments on things you'd like to see different or anything new that you'd like to see as well. I might even do a few algorithms for Advent of Code to show you how I solve the problems. I am not an expert, but I think I can do a decent job for some of these. So let me know if that'd be interesting to you. I hope you really enjoyed. Like and subscribe and happy holidays. See ya.